Hello friends, this video on wind storms and cyclones part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the question is, does air have so much of strength to cause these changes? Because see, these are all noticeable changes. Whether you talk about the movement of the hair or you talk about the pages of your book which gets turned on, turned on, on it which are turned on its own due to uh, wind or you talk about the movement of different parts of the plant. So all these movements happen because some sort of force applies on these objects. So that means that when air moves it has some sort of energy, it has some sort of strength because of which it can make other objects move. So that, that's quite interesting, that sounds interesting. So let us see how exactly or what property of air helps the movements of objects. So here we will talk about this surprising yet beautiful concept that air exerts pressure. Now since air exerts pressure, this pressure makes a lot of things move along with the moving air. Just think of these scenarios. Have you ever seen that when you are trying to run and if wind is also blowing in the same direction, what happens? You feel as if the wind is pushing you and is helping you to run in that direction. Like in this case, forget about the wind. Let's take another example. Let's say that you have come out for a walk with your pet. Now, if this your pet is running in this direction, it is kind of pushing you in the same direction. So it becomes easier for you in, to run in the same direction. Similarly, if wind is also blowing in this direction, so it supports you all the more. So basically air is exerting a pressure on you because of which it is becoming easier for you to run in the same direction. When you ride a bicycle, so riding a bicycle is also easier when you are trying to ride it in the same direction as the wind. So let's say you are riding in this direction, the wind is also blowing in this direction. So the wind will actually give a pressure or it will give exert a force on you in the same direction which will make your uh, riding easier. Flying a kite. So when you fly a kite, if the wind again is in the same direction, it becomes easier for you because you know wherever direction you want your kite to go by exerting very little force you are able to do that. But imagine a situation where the reverse thing is happening. Let's say you are trying to fly the kite in this direction but there is a wind which is blowing in this direction. So basically the wind is trying to oppose the movement of the kite. So you need to apply more force. So it will need more effort from your side to fly a kite in a direction opposite to that of the wind. <clears throat> the same thing holds true when you are sailing a boat. So if you are in the direction of the wind, it helps. It be your your uh, sail becomes easier. But the same thing if you do it in the opposite direction, it becomes difficult. Now, whenever you are moving along the direction of the wind, you are seeing that you need to put less effort. That's because air is also putting in some pressure. So the moving air is also exerting some pressure either on you or on the boat or on your kite or on the bicycle. So in all these cases, you if you look at these examples, you get to know that yes, to some extent the statement is true that air can exert pressure. So let us try to perform some experiments. So in these experiments, we will actually prove that yes, air do exert pressure. Now try this out yourself. Take a glass, fill it with water up to the brim. So it's like completely filled with water. Now you take a cardboard or maybe a thick sheet of paper and put that cardboard, place it over the glass as I have placed it here. So this is the cardboard or maybe a thick sheet of paper and this glass is filled with water up to the brim. So it's completely full with water, right? So now we will see a magic will happen. So what you have to do next is turn the glass upside down. So just turn it upside down quickly and take your hands away. <coughs> so you are just holding it from here. So your hand is not there at the bottom. So what should have happened? What do we normally expect? 
we normally expect that the cardboard should fall off. That's because we have not stuck it to the glass. So there is no glue between the cardboard and the glass. But the magic that happens here is the cardboard still sticks to the glass. It stays at the same place even when we have removed our hands. So that's almost like a magic. But this is not really magic. There is a science behind it. Do you know why does this happen? This happens because now if the card is staying here, that means there is some pressure which is being exerted in this direction because of which it is staying here. But our hand is not there. So our hand is not exerting any pressure. Then what? So it is basically the pressure which is exerted by the air in the atmosphere. So the surroundings, air is present everywhere. So basically the atmospheric pressure which is exerted on this card is greater than the pressure which is exerted by the water which is present inside the glass. Now since this pressure is more, therefore the card remains there. So this atmospheric pressure forces the card to stick to the glass. So you see, here you get to know that atmospheric pressure exists. Because of its existence, this magic happened. So this is one simple yet beautiful experiment which you can carry out at your place also. Let's look at another example. Now, when you uh, say drink anything, juice, cold drink, so how do you sip with a straw? How do you drink it with a straw? So as you sip, through the straw, the liquid comes through the straw, it comes to your mouth. Now, if you try to understand this concept that how the straw works, so that also sounds quite interesting. Because you see, we say that all the objects get attracted towards the gravity. So every object has a tendency to fall towards the ground. But in case of straw, as you just try to pull it, the liquid comes from bottom to the top. So how does this movement of the liquid happens? So let us try to understand this. So when I look at this glass of liquid with the straw, so when the straw is sitting in the glass, so nobody is sipping, so you are not sipping. As long as you do not sip through the straw, the liquid is not going to come inside your mouth. Now when the straw is just simply sitting in the glass, what happens? pressure which exists on the surface of this liquid is same all over. So everywhere, here, 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 everywhere, the pressure is the same. Nobody is exerting any extra pressure anywhere. So when I talk about this pressure, I'm also talking about the pressure which exists on the little bit of surface inside the straw. So when you look at the straw, this surface of the straw, it also has the same pressure which is there which exists at this level of the liquid correct now what happens when we suck the air out of the straw so when we suck the air so basically we are taking in some air from the straw inside our mouth right so basically when we suck the air pressure inside the straw decreases so inside the straw the air pressure decreases so now what happens? The pressure outside the straw is more than the pressure inside the straw. So here the pressure is more and here the pressure is less. So this pressure, this since the pressure is more here, so basically here you, the air will exert some pressure on the liquid and this pressure will force the liquid to move up through the straw. So basically it is due to the difference in pressure inside the straw and outside the straw which forces the liquid to move up the straw when the straw is being sucked. As long as the straw is not sucked, the liquid will not move up through the straw. So basically what happens here is pressure outside the straw is greater than pressure inside the straw. And why does this happen? This happens because we have sucked in the air from inside the straw. So air itself, we have taken it. So now when we have taken up the air, so obviously the air pressure has reduced inside. So that's 
that's the reason how the pressure difference is created and wherever there is a pressure difference so it is something like this so from this side you have this much of pressure whereas from this side you just have this much pressure so if you have an object here so overall the object will experience a pressure in this direction right because more pressure is being exerted in this direction so the same thing holds true here since the pressure outside is more therefore the liquid is like kind of it moves up through the straw due to that increased pressure outside thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again